Hello! Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat at salamat sa Diyos at muli tayong nagkasama-sama dito sa ating uh, online na uh, Filipino service. Kamusta na? Kamusta na kayo? Para po doon sa mga bagong uh, nakikinig ngayon, wag ko kayong mag-atubili na mag-comment below kung may nais kayong iparating sa bawat isa. Meron ka bang pinagdadaanan ngayon? O meron ka bang problema? Kung ang sagot mo ay oo, take heart kapatid. Dahil ang problema ay likas, likas na sa tao. Walang exception sa atin. Katulad ninyo, ay ako din kuminsan dumadaan sa problema o challenge. Isipin, isipin na lang natin na may tinuturo sa atin ng Diyos sa problema ang pinagdadaanan natin. Di ba madalas natin naririnig na kaya inalaw ng Diyos ang problema ay dahil makakayanan natin ito. Makakayanan natin ito sa tulong ng Diyos. Pero bago natin pakinggan si Pastor Raymond sa mensahe ng Diyos, ay sabayan natin si Sister Kyle sa kanyang awiting Salamat o Diyos. Jesus, salamat o Diyos, salamat
tapat ka sa iyong pangako na hindi mo kami iiwan ni papabayaan man. Dakila ka, dakila ka, dakila pag-ibig mo, dakila Good morning, my dear brother and sister from Filipino service. And uh, it's a nice and uh, to meet you in the midst of online. And I believe that all of you are doing well. At this moment, I just want to share with you a message how God uses problems to help us to grow. Corinthians. I will read 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. It says this, These little troubles are getting us ready for an eternal glory that will make all our troubles seem like nothing. Let us pray. Father, I just want to give thanks to you for this day. It's my prayer to see my fellow brothers and sisters from Filipino service, always under your hand of protection and guidance, O oh God. Father, I pray, God, that uh, your word will continue to give us that strength and, Lord, that you help us to, to understand your purpose and your plan, O oh God. We're going to commit to you this morning. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Now, this message, we're going to listen as we discuss and we hear. It will help us to understand ourselves better while we struggle in our daily situation. I know many of us at times, we do struggle a lot of situations, our needs and other matters. And many people are seeking an answer for security. In the midst of hardship and personal needs. So, I want to share with you this morning. As we seek for peace, the only peace comes is from Christ. That is whereby we understand in the Bible, is in John chapter 16, verse 33. This thing I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. My friend, we're going to discuss three objectives here. What we can discover from this message and the objective that why we're going to listen to the Word of God. Number one, the objective is to teach us belief that God is shaping us. I want to tell you that every day, God is shaping us to be a better Christian. God is shaping us that we may grow in His way. And number two is to guide us 
to grow according to His plan. You know, we want to, to learn, you know, in the midst of this situation. We want to see how God guides us and we can grow according to His plan. And number three is to tell us, to make, make us aware we need God, not men. So, what we are seeing here that how God uses our problem and to make us grow maturely, we got to really hang on to God, not men. No. God uses everything. God uses everything, even the pandemic we are in right now, you know, is to help our character grow. He uses all our problems to help us to grow maturely according to His ways. Now, we, we may feel tired and weary because how COVID-19 pandemic is affecting our life. We thank God that what we are going through at this situation, we can see that God is always protecting us and God is always covering us. My dear friends, as we see in some other countries, COVID-19 had taken many lives. But it's my prayer to see that all of you are doing good and your family members over in Philippines are all doing good. So, what we can see how God uses problems to bring discipline and guidance into our lives. You know, we're going to see here, David, he himself, who spent seven years as a fugitive, running and hide from Saul and his troops. You know, in Psalms chapter 56, verse 3, when David, he cried out to God, When I am afraid, I will trust in you. you know, when I am afraid, I will trust in you. David finds himself in a situation like his problems, but he put his trust in God. And next you can see in Psalms chapter 119, verse 67, you know, Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I obey your words. You see, we can give you an example here. I'm going to give you an example. Take an example like you see an athlete who disciplines himself to train, grows stronger as does God's child. You know, who preserve and keeps on Pushing ahead. I know. How you react to your problems and difficulties shows clearly the kind of stuff that is within you. Like what James says in chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. When you have many kinds of troubles, you should be full of joy because you know that these troubles test your faith and this will give you patience. You know, God uses problems to help us in a way of giving us a sense of our weaknesses and His strength. Something that never happens apart from being stripped of our ability to make things happen, to guide our life and future. Therefore, this is the time for us to look to God, to place our hope in Him and to trust Him. Knowingly, He is still in control. This morning, let us come together and listen to this message that today, God, He is our hope and His hope will not disappoint us. Let me give you this 
outline, we're going to discover a few answers that why God is our hope. You know, and he, His hope will not disappoint us. The first answer I'm going to tell you this is that God's purpose for each of us in this earth is to prepare us for eternity. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. We know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God. No. Are called according to to his purpose for them. Now, we look in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. The word says, We know that God causes everything to work together for the good. Now, this verse tells us, you know, those who love God and are doing their best to obey his commands. Now, even though bad things, sad things or evil things that we will encounter into our lives. God will use them to ultimately bring about good both in our life and in the world. Now, there are many things, many good reasons people like this verse. I'm sure you too to understand this verse. It's because we all suffer. And we all experience hardships. Some of it almost unbearable. You know how we go through the situation. Sometimes we cannot take it. But those who believe in God, and that is most of us want to know what God's relationship to that suffering is. Let us study this together. How God uses current situation to shape us. You know, the Bible says this. God is working in every experience you have. Our mistakes, our wrong decisions, our success and failures, and our different jobs, relationship, and, and other things even our financial, you name it, you got it. You know, God is working in everything in our lives, even our sins, to accomplish His purpose. I know God is working very hard in each of our lives. What is my purpose in life? Sometimes you ask this question. Many people go through life feeling discouraged, about themselves and thinking they have, you know, they do not have a purpose in life. But that's not true. Whoever you are, whatever your life, experiences, talents, physical ability or role, you have a purpose. You will see that God can use each of us even in this pandemic, to make us stronger and to develop our spiritual muscle. I am very sure that God is developing us. God uses every situation, every moment that to build us stronger. Friends, sometimes we know that how long are we going through this matter. But we take note this, that God is building us. God will make you stronger to develop your spiritual muscles. And that's why in Psalms 23 verse 4, David writes, he does not fear because God is with him. He relies on God's presence and it brings him strength and comfort. Remember that for there to be a shadow, there has to be a light. My dear friend, I do not know what is your valley of the shadow of death is. But one thing 
I want to tell you. I do know who the light is that is walking with you in that valley. I believe any moment when we walk, we know that God is with us. He is walking with us. Jody Erickson Tada. Let me give you this example, a picture of this lady. An inspirational speaker, author, and singer who has been confined to a wheelchair for more than 40 years. When people ask her why God allowed suffering, Jody often says this, God allows what He hates to accomplish what He loves. My dear friends, what does God's love? For each people to enter into relationship with Himself and become more like Him. God is molding us each day. God is developing us each day. Jody's life and ministry are a stunning testimony of how God can use a tragedy like a paralyzing diving accident to impact the lives of millions. My dear friends, know your purpose. May your life bring impact to others. Throughout this current situation, may your life bring impacts to many people surrounding your circle. We are forced to face problems and pressure. They are too big for us to resolve. In ways, in this way, we know that God gets our attention. When the problems come, always God will get attention. We will look up to God. We cannot continue to purpose our goals, tasks, and relationship in the same manner. We have to stop and evaluate our situation and ask God for wisdom. Obey His words and trust Him to bring the help we need. All this God wants us to understand you know, that He will bring peace into our lives. Come to Him, my dear friend. You will experience the peace that He gives you. Number two, let me share with you this number two. My second point, the answer is today's problems get us ready for eternity. We cannot imagine right now. What is 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17? It says this just now that we have read. These little troubles are getting us ready for an eternal glory that will make call, make all of our troubles seem like nothing. You know. What are your heavy burden or your problems you have been carrying through today? Today's problem may seem to be very heavy for each of us, a heavy burden. But let us remember this big picture. How every arrows after arrows piercing at us, it can be very painful. God loves us. And the way we can see that He always acts with our best interests at His heart to tender us. With His tender care, He brings peace to heal our every pain. We have an enlarged picture. Let us look a bigger picture of God and His purpose. We can trust 
that when we run into difficulties, He is using them to make us more like Christ and achieving us an eternal glory. None of us wants to invite pain and suffering into our lives. And Paul is an example of a man who went through much suffering in this world of being a Christian. At times, he despairs even of life and yet, despite of terrible persecution and many imprisonments, Paul willing to endure his suffering with godly grace, patience, endurance, and unspeakable joy. That was the reason Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. These little troubles are getting us ready for an eternal glory that will make all our troubles seem like nothing. Oh no, friends, in this world we face stress and disappointment come into our everyday life. Every day we do face this. What caused us to get discouraged is inevitable. We cannot avoid each of us. You and me will experience a measure of discouragement from time to time. Now, our discouragement may at times become so severe and we become despondent, discouraged, disappointment. At times, we may want to quit, give up because of some emotional hurt that drag us down or because we are physically worn out to the point of exhaustion. We are tired. You know, discouragement can be making us weak. And it is certainly contagious. If we permit ourselves to be discouraged, we know that others will become discouraged too. Why could we become so discouraged? You know, we look in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, in the beginning of part, the part A. We have treasure in jars of clay. You know, our life becomes hard-pressed, but not crushed. Look here. We are being crushed, being pressured, pressed so hard, but we are not crushed. You know, we are hard-pressed on every side but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. This from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. My friends, I want to tell you this. What you are going through, it remember, we all need is to remain faithful and God is faithful too. When we are hard-pressed on every side, every corner, yet we are not crushed. Why? Because we know whom we have believed and convinced that God is able to guard what God has entrusted us until the end. That is the peace we have. Even though all the troubles and suffering we face each day. That is where it comes from. You know, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, it said that that is why I am suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause to shame because I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted. Him until that day. I know whom I have believed. If you know who you believe, put your trust in Him as God. My conclusion this morning, remember, God is our hope. 
and His hope will not disappoint us. Therefore, don't be discouraged. Put your trust in the Lord, knowing He will guard your soul until the end. But there will seem like nothing in heaven. Hang on. That, you know, that hope when you are weary, you know, overwhelmed, not just plainly ready to give up. Look up. Look up. He is our peace who has broken every war. God is preparing you for eternity with Him in heaven. My dear friends, as I conclude, let me give you these two points of takeaway. You go back and ponder these questions and think about it. God is, how God is preparing us for eternity. Number one, how you experience your difficulties prepare you for heaven and help you endure them. Number two, how have you experienced the hope that only comes from God? And I trust this morning the message will encourage you while you are in the midst of discouragement. God bless. Let us pray. Father, we want to give thanks to you. May Lord, your words will continue to give us the strength and what we are going through at this point of time. Father, we pray, O oh God, you help us. Sometimes we know we are tired and we get disappointment, and we get discouraged. But Lord, we know that your strength will always be upon us. May this day, O oh God, I pray for each of my dear fellow friends, Filipinos, congregation. I want to pray for each of them, O oh God, that they have gone through many discouragement and disappointment. Lord, may they find peace in you. Father, I pray for each of them, that Lord, you continue to help them, and Lord, strengthen them each day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Maraming pong salamat sa inyong pakikinig at uh, bago po tayo magkahiwa-hiwalay ay nais kong uh, ilapit ang, ang ating mga problema sa ating Panginoon Diyos sa ma maikling panalangin. Panginoon, maraming pong salamat sa iyong mensahe. Nalain po namin na patuloy mo kaming tulungan kung ano man ang aming pinagdadaanan, ang problema sa buhay. Pangunahan mo po kami. Hindi po namin ito kaya pero ikaw po meron kang magagawa at tutulungan mo kaming mapaglabanan ang anumang uri ng uh, trial sa buhay namin. Sa iyo po ang papuri at pasalamat sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen and Amen. Mago po tayo magkahiwahiwalay ay nais ko kayong uh, ipala, paalalahanan na sa narating na Sabado, meron po tayong Zoom, 9 o'clock, magkita-kita tayo. God bless po at... Uh, Pagpala ng Ama, ng Anak at ng Diyos Espiritu Santo ay sumaatin. Amen and Amen.